Lucky Peach 101 Easy Asian Recipes is another cookbook written by Peter Meehan and the editor of The Lucky Peach. It's the same team as the Momofuku cookbook from 2009, which you can watch my review in the link that pops up. If you don't know Lucky Peach, it was a monthly magazine started in 2011 and founded by Peter Meehan, Chris Ying, and David Chang. This magazine focused over recipes, chefs, and the food creatives out there. Overall, it had 23 issues and was very highly regarded for how self-aware, experimental, and food-focused it was. Unfortunately, it came to an end in 2017 due to personal conflicts with Peter and David. In an interview with New York Times, Peter Mian says, Dave and I have had a difficult but successful partnership for years, like two objects that both have intense gravitational pull. It made interesting friction for a while, but I think we kind of collided in the last six months. You know, I wonder if they're still friends today. Its run lasted 23 issues. These issues aren't too hard to find today, but are marked up considerably. I mean, look at this price for the complete collection I found on eBay. You could get a KitchenAid mixer and a Vitamix blender for that much, so I don't think it's worth it anymore. But they do have four books out there. 101 Easy Asian Recipes, Power Vegetables, All About Eggs, and The Worst of Lucky Peach. These physical books are still out there in their physical form at a much more reasonable price compared to the previous Lucky Peach magazine issues. So I may cover the rest in the future. It is kind of sad to have seen Lucky Peach go like that, but at least the recipes are here sticking around with us. This book is exactly what the title says. It's 101 Easy Asian Recipes. The authors know that lumping in all Asian foods in one cookbook is a disservice to their region, and they admit this. They do leave out Indian food and Tajikistan food. They say the reason not every Asian region was highlighted was that it wasn't their goal to have completeness, since it's pretty much impossible, because again, Asia is so huge. But it does feel like they used just this region of Asia for this book. This book feels like it wanted to be one of those typical 1001 best recipe kind of books that you find on a Walmart shelf. But instead, they did this with a more well thought out approach and delicious recipes. This book is definitely great for anyone who wants to jump into a very general Asian cooking and find easy weeknight recipes. Even in the beginning, it starts off saying, no recipes that call other recipes and no frying. It's very simple and it's just meant for easy cooking. It's definitely an improvement over the Momofuku cookbook, which was really littered with just sub recipes and frying and just overly complicated. This book starts off with the equipment you'll need, like a wok or a rice cooker, types of noodles, the types of rice, and pantry items centered around these Asian recipes. Pantry items have different tiers of complexity for these ingredients. Level 1, you'll start off with soy sauce, and I'll go to level 3, which will end with preserved black beans. I like how these sections are laid out. All the ingredients are there in a centralized section. It makes it easy to see which ingredient I would want to try. It even has little notes on the ingredients, so it makes it easier to understand these unknown ingredients to me. I like this setup a lot. It can help people unfamiliar with these flavors ease in and try new flavor profiles out there. Recipes are laid out by category like noodles, chicken, and seafood. All the recipes are in the contents on the first page, so it's great to see everything together. So on a busy day, I can easily rummage through all the recipes quickly and find something I would want to try. Recipes are as simple as you can get, and I like how each recipe has an explanation or personal story at the bottom. It does have weird references around, like how the peanuts can tie the room together, like the rug in Big Lebowski. These little tidbits are pretty funny, and I really enjoyed reading these. Recipes can be dead simple like the miso glazed eggplant, or it can get a little more complex like the kung pao shrimp, which to me doesn't even seem that bad. I actually frequently make the miso glazed eggplant, which I find really easy, delicious, and healthy. So this book really introduced me to some really great recipes out there. I would say the main themes of recipes of the book are Korean, Japanese, and Chinese. Recipes included are twindon jjigae, omu rice, soba, char shu, and ha and sour soup. And are more centered around these three countries, but there are some from Vietnam, Thailand, and other Asian countries throughout the book. There's plenty of traditional stuff, plus some Asian fusion food throughout this book. And going through this book, I really only found like three recipes that I wasn't very interested in. I think they did a really good job in picking which recipes to include in this book. It feels very well thought out, almost like a greatest hits of Asian cuisine. The pictures in this book are also great. It's really simple and usually just a dish with a solid colored background or a setting that's really easy on the eyes. I'm telling you, they really embrace simplicity in this book and the authors know what they want this book to be. So every recipe in this book is unassuming and well thought out for the beginning or average or even experienced home cook who just wants an easy meal to make. 
dead simple book with a little bit of insight throughout the book and it's great for anyone to pick up. It's not going to improve your technique or dig too deep into certain parts. It's like a shotgun blast. Short range, very effective, and a very large spread. There's so many different cultures and cuisines in this book. I really encourage you to go out and find more cookbooks if there's a certain dish that you like. So if you like omo rice, maybe go out and get a cookbook based on Japanese cooking. Or if you like the twinchan jige, go get a cookbook based on Korean cooking. I think this cookbook is really cool and having such a diversity that it can give readers opportunities to kind of see everything and maybe decide what they want to focus on and learn more about. So I really encourage you just to see what you like and go out and cook it. It's also, what the heck is this? The description is longer than the recipe. Anyway, this book is an 8 out of 10.